This time, exactly one year ago, I narrowly missed making the worst choice of my life. And I want to tell you exactly how that led to everything great that happened in 2020. A 40% raise, a much better work-life balance, and the building of this YouTube channel. Here's how it happened. If we haven't had the pleasure of getting to know each other, my name is Andrew. I am a data scientist here in Silicon Valley. That's Professor Meatball. He is a dog turret from the University of Corgel. And today I'm gonna to answer the questions of exactly how you can royally trap yourself. You can royally screw up your prospects for getting that extra bonus each year of your young professional life. And that bonus could mean a lot of different things. It could mean a financial bonus to your net worth. It could mean a spiritual bonus to the amount of recognition you get at work. And then finally, it can mean a accomplishment bonus. So whenever you are feeling like you are stagnating at work, you've achieved the one thing you wanted to achieve, whether that's a stable $60,000, $50,000 job, or perhaps you are a young professional and you're making somewhere between a $70,000 to $90,000 job doing consulting or investment banking, or you are a Silicon Valley engineer or data scientist making six figures right off the bat and having a great time at the volleyball court or wherever it is that kids spend their times nowadays in the pandemic, you are stagnating you are slowly stagnating if you are not thinking about the next step, which is what I was doing this time last year. I really wasn't thinking about the next step. I had a general understanding of how I could rise up the ladder of the Silicon Valley company that I was working for, but I had absolutely no idea how or where the resources were to get started. Hopefully this video will help you understand exactly where I could have gone horribly wrong and how to smash that like button as hard as you can so that we can defeat the YouTube algorithm together. Well, with that said, let's get into it. This time, last year, I deprioritized my personal and financial growth a ton. This time last year, I had only three things on my mind. Travel, Dungeons and Dragons, and volleyball. All the free time I had on and off of campus was just to occupy myself recreationally playing volleyball on campus. We had a nice beach court set up inside the campus itself, as well as Dungeons and Dragons and board game nights outside of campus. With whatever little bandwidth I had, I would just think about where to travel to next. At this point, I had over a dozen countries traveled to since I came to California, and I wanted to go to the next place. Now, if you're interested in how unlimited vacation translates into how me taking almost two months off to travel to those dozen countries a year ago would be interesting for you, if that was a sentence that made any sense, go ahead and leave a comment down below to hear about that story. I was feeling pretty stagnated. I didn't really understand what else to fill this hole in my life, this kind of empty feeling that I was just keeping myself recreationally busy and just making that six-figure bank until I decided that I needed to find a new job. When I hurled myself into the ring, I had a deadline. I wanted to find a job in the next eight weeks. And then when eight weeks went by and I was still in the pit of all of these different job applications and final round interviews, I was feeling pretty down on myself. I missed my mark. It really didn't feel like eight weeks worth of a six figure salaries paycheck was well forfeited for my process. Two months out of 12 months is a sixth of your salary. So that was when I was feeling pretty down on myself, feeling like I might have made the biggest mistake of my young career until I was able to pit three different offers against each other on the 10th week. When I finally started work during the pandemic, I was ready. I was ready to do a two hour commute there and back from here to San Francisco. I live around two hours south of it if you have heavy traffic. So normally if you start heading off to the office around 8 a.m., you're not gonna get there until like 10 a.m. That was not the case. I never ever made that commute because the very first day the pandemic hit and I started working remotely. This ended up being a surprising best of both worlds. Not only did I cut out all of the hours I would have spent on a commute, but I was lucky enough to be able to then turn those productive hours into creating this YouTube channel and making all of these educational content for you in terms of lifestyle and in terms of data science learning. I'm hopefully going to continue. And this opened up my eyes a ton, opening up nine streams of income, most of them passive, as well as creating these a legacy educational content on YouTube is going to be a lot more rewarding, a lot more to grow on. Every single new subscriber I welcome in, every single person that watches one of my videos, I wanna thank you guys so much because this is a dream. 
this is something that is giving myself meaning, meaning that I didn't have a year ago. So yes, I was able to improve my quality of life, my work-life balance, as well as shooting myself into the new year on a magic carpet of sorts. However, it is a lot of work. Each of these videos you see still takes five-ish hours of work, not only from me, but from my best friend and roommate who does a lot of the heavy editing in the beginning. And I do mess up a lot. To the amount of rec rec recognizement. The main point is that I never would have made this incredibly pivotal part of my journey if I stuck to the volleyball courts and the Dungeons and Dragons and the board games. I still do those things. I still play three active campaigns with possibly another one on the way. And those, those take some time, but gosh darn it, if I don't have the best of both worlds, the best of all three worlds, the spiritual side of being able to be connected with my family, the people that consider my family here in the Bay Area, the academic side of being able to continue learning and researching these specific video concepts, but also working on initiatives like the 66 Days of Data, where I am able to do something data science-y, computational, statistical, or nerdy every single day. Thanks to people like Kenji and people like you, part of a community of learners. And finally, professionally. The third and most important thing is that you constantly keep growing yourself. Your self-worth, your net worth, as well as the myriad of different things that you want to do. Everybody wants to be a Renaissance man. Hopefully you had chances to learn some art before the pandemic, some creative outlet, singing, dancing, or whatever it is that keeps you integrated into your community in college or beyond. If you have something that you love to do, for me it was fire juggling and circus and, and martial arts and acrobatics that you no longer am able to do during the pandemic, go ahead and write that comment down below to let me know what you are hoping to get back into as soon as the pandemic starts to let up. That's the trivia question for today. What are you missing out on that you could have done this year? And what are you grateful for that you're able to do just because this year existed? For me, it was start this YouTube channel and create this amazing community of people just like you. Thank you so much for being there with me. Thank you for 2,000 subscribers. Let's read some comments for this video. It's Editing Andrew with Editing Meatball here, and today I just wanted to cover a couple of the comments that really made me smile, especially back in December. I had, less than a month ago, 1.69 subscribers, uh, thousand subscribers, 1.69 thousand subscribers, and a user called Redonculus said, Hey Andrew, just found your channel, can't believe you're under 2k subs right now. The videos and thumbnails are amazing, keep it up, you will make it on YouTube. I really hope so. Thank you for people like you who comment and support the channel. I want to give a big shout out to Data Professor. He had one of the very first collabs with me on my channel and without his support, there's no way I would be at my size. He said, hey Andrew, congrats on 2K. Your channel is growing very fast and 100 videos in six months. How can you do it? Would love to see a video about your journey in six months in. Kudos. Thank you so much, Data Professor. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm excited to do a new collab with you sometime soon. Finally, the third comment that I wanted to give a shout out to is Happy Llama. Happy Llama says, you're doing a great job with uploading new videos every day. I have the attention span of a goldfish, but I can actually watch your videos. I am focusing my gaze on Professor Meatballs, just vibing in the background, and I can listen to your speech, so it's perfect. After also watching this cute dog daily calm my anxiety, thank you, Professor. Thank you too, Andrew. Thank you, Happy Llama. Happy Llama has been one of the most awesome supporters on the channel. Here's another comment from Happy Llama that says, I see your faces more than my mother's and we live in the same house. At this point, I feel like you are a family member. Winky sad face, uh, winky sad face back to you, Happy Llama. And now back to not editing Andrew. Thank you guys for sticking this far into the video. I really do appreciate it. If you wanna be shouted out in this video and for me to support your YouTube channel or perhaps your brand or whatever you were trying to get started in the pandemic, then go ahead and screenshot part of this video, put it on your Instagram, tag me Andrew Mo Money, and I am happy. I am happy to include you in one of these next videos. And they're getting less frequent, have you noticed? Uh, so that means that they're gonna be more valuable. So, until next time, back to the original scheduled Andrew. For now, but not for forever, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.